everyone, it's Bettina. I built another circuit, so it's show and tell time. All right, what did I build this time? Well, I built the programmable function generator. Now, this function generator is not your typical function generator where you have a triangle wave, a sine wave, and square wave, etc. It's a little bit more basic than that. In fact, it's just an experiment. It came from the engineer's notebook from Radio Shack by our friend Forrest Mims. Fantastic genius. All right, so what the heck is happening here? Well, I'll tell you what's happening. First of all, we've got a clock. That's our typical 555 timer. <clears throat> and that's feeding our 4017 chip. This 4017 chip is a decade counter. It's a very useful chip. You'll find out that it has many, 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 many purposes. But for ours, we're going to use it for this function generator. So let me tell you how this works. Clock signal goes into the 4017. Remember, it's got 10 outputs. It's a decade, it's a decade counter. First clock pulse comes in that first output is high, all the rest are low. Second clock pulse comes in, the second output is high, first one's low, all the other ones are low. Third clock pulse comes in, the third output goes high, first two are low, all the rest are low too. As you can see, it just cycles through it. So it actually um, has a high output essentially, uh, but sequentially going through the chip. And these chips up here, <clears throat> these are 4066 chips. Think of them as switches, That's because that's how they really are, <clears throat> but they're controlled electronically as opposed to a physical switch. So you can actually, see, oh, by the way, there's uh, four, uh, let's call them switches for now, in the 4066, each 4066. So I've got 10 in total, so I needed two and a half chips. So what happens is, oh, just before I get into the uh, what happens, is feeding our first switch, if I'll, I'll call it that, is a voltage divider, right? That's all it is. We've got a pot there, and these are little trim pots. Got little trim pots on the circuit itself. And I can adjust those. Uh, you can see the plus, uh, uh, the plus supply is actually feeding one end of each of those trim pots. And the center uh, tap of the pot is going into our switch. And we can adjust every one of these. So you can imagine if I if I were to adjust these to different levels and then we actually set or enable each one of those switches on the 4066. The first oh if if I were to do that, let's 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 just go through it. So let's say the first clock pulse comes in, first output goes high. That enables this first 4066 switch, <clears throat> closes it. Well, now I've got a certain voltage, whatever that divider is set to. Second clock, clock pulse comes in. The first one goes low, so that particular um, voltage there is there's nothing. It's gone. However, the second one kicks in, and whatever this is set for, it'll send that pulse through our output, and that's our output. We're going to measure that on the oscilloscope, and so on and so forth. So it actually cycles through all of these switches, and with different actual voltage levels on them, I'll get some pretty funky waveforms. So that's how the circuit works. It's pretty simple. Let's take a look at it now in reality. So I built, <clears throat> built it on a perf board, as you can see. I've got a really, really bad camera. I think I'm going to invest in a good one because I'm starting to make a lot of videos. So I think I should start to invest in a good camera. Well, anyway, this is the power supply up here. I, I'm just using an 8-volt regulator. That's all I had. I mean, any, I think this chip can go anywhere from... 5 to 15 or something crazy like that. Uh, so 8 volts is, is fine for me. <clears throat> uh, there's my 555 timer right there. There's my 4017 chip. And these are my 4066 chips. So those, think of those as our switches. And by the way, these 4066s, you'll find if you go through the, the data book, you'll find a heck of a lot more um, types of these electronic switching. There's a single pull, double throw, um, and there's all types of different configurations. So um, just look at your data books and you'll, you'll, you'll see them and you can do whatever you want with them. And these are my trim pots, of course, on the top. And that's what I'm going to control my voltages with on each particular output. So hopefully that made some sense. Um, this particular pot here, it's just the frequency of the actual 555 timer. I think I've got it set for, uh, let's take a look here. All right. Got that there. Sorry, I should focus more on the camera. So I just put uh, my frequency counter 
um, on the chip. Oh, sorry, that's the output. Oh, great. My probe just uh, flew apart. Um, anyway, what I've got is uh, I've got the clock set for uh, 20 kilohertz. That's what this is set for. And the uh, best case scenario on my uh, output on my oscilloscope, if every one of these pots had the same resistance and same voltage, would be a perfect square wave. And what I'm getting, I think, is 5K on the output of this particular uh, setup. However, let me show you the uh, the beauty of it. Because anybody can just make a square wave, right? Why well, go through all this stuff here and just create a square wave? Well, I could have just got that from my 555 timer. But no, watch what I, happens when I start to adjust these pots here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and there's 10 of them. And I just have to get a clock signal here. Oh boy, what's going on here? There we go. Clocking in here. I just gotta clock my oscilloscope. There we go. As you can see, what I'm doing is I'm just adjusting each step. All right, there's a step over there. There's one here. I'll adjust that a little bit there. And this one over here. And so on and so forth. So by adjusting the pots, I'm actually adjusting each step. Just like I had mentioned in the diagram with these different voltages up here, I'm actually controlling the voltage on the output. But of course the 4017 through the timer is actually turning this one on, next one on, next one off, uh, by turning all the other ones off. So I don't really know what the heck you could do with this thing, quite frankly, but it was more of a learning experience than anything on how these chips work and for future reference on my own parts. So if I needed anything like that or if I needed an electronic switch of some sort, well, now I know where to get it. So that's the circuit. Nothing fancy. Um, just put everything together on a protoboard, perf board kind of thing. I'll probably just file it away and move on to the next one. Anyway, that's it for now. That's your programmable function generator. Take care. Bye for now.